everybody, this is Anne. I can already hear the questions. What are you doing with that huge lump of clay? Is that a coil? What the heck? You all know that we love a challenge here at Little Street Pottery, and for this video we came up with a doozy. We've all seen potters make their wares using strands of coils. We wanted to see if we could make a pot using only one long coil. The first issue to tackle was with the clay. Even though I wanted the bowl to be about one pound or so, I knew the implementation would require much more clay to build it. Let's see what this weighs. Okay, let's go with that. The next challenge is how to roll a coil with this bulky lump of clay. Let's try stretching it sideways. Uh, without the mat. <laughs> turned the roll a quarter turn and threw it again. I repeated this process of rolling it a quarter turn and then throwing it until it got too long. I then began to pick up each end and throw them sideways. When I could no longer throw it around, I gently rolled it in the places that looked thicker. I also started pinching the middle thicker areas with my fingers. I kept rolling until I ran out of table. I had to curl it around the table to get it to fit. I measured it to see how long it was. It's about eight feet. So that should make a nice mug, perhaps. For the next step, I needed to flatten out just the top of the coil. I used a rolling pin to gently roll over the top. I then compressed it using a rubber kidney rib and a little water. The top layer wasn't even, but that really didn't matter. To make one consistently shaped coil, I thought I'd try the cool diamond core handle extruder tool. It's not exactly advertised for this purpose, but I think it might work. I started at one end of the clay and worked my way down. You can see why I needed to start with a lot more clay, so the tool had room on all sides to create the extrusion. You can also see that I was pushing down a little bit hard, so the sled was creating a line at the top, but I figured I could smooth that down later. Well, we checked the Guinness Book of World Records, and this is the world's longest extrusion created with a diamond core tool. Congratulations, we did it! The next challenge is how do we make this into a pot? It wasn't long before I realized I needed to straighten out the coil. I probably should have done that first. Jim and I fashioned a folding table at the end of the work table to handle the overhang. Now that's one problem solved. For the next step, I need this coil to slide along the table. How about we put some wax paper under the coil for that? Uh, I probably should have done that too before the extruder tool. <laughs> there we go. First thing, I cut off the jagged edge of the coil using a box cutter blade. Now this is the key to making this work. Jim created the Coilmaster 2000 for this next stage. It operates similarly to a toilet paper dispenser, although we're going to wind the clay up on it. Now this is a highly sophisticated tool made by placing two commercial glaze jars about two feet apart. 
Using 2-inch painter's tape, he taped a 2-inch PVC pipe to the top of the jars. Positioned in the center of the pipe was a free-rolling carpet tube. To avoid the clay sticking to the tube, I layered it up with plastic wrap. I wet the end of the clay and stuck it down at the end of the carpet tube, like this. I began to slide the wax paper down towards me while rolling the carpet tube at the same time. Once I got one revolution around, I scored and slipped the top edge of the coil in preparation for the next revolution. I made sure the clay was butted right up against the first coil and that the seal was tight. I continued the process of pulling and coiling, scoring and slipping, brushing and sealing the coils. Once the coils were on the Coilmaster 2000, I could get rid of the excess clay casing and put that back in my clay bag. Once I had several revolutions tightly connected, I was confident I could make this project work. I made sure that all the connections were tight, but just to make sure, I took the carpet tube off the coil master and pounced it on the table, hoping that gravity would compress any air pockets. The next challenge is to make the ends of the clay flat. Luckily, the carpet tube has a flat edge. I figured I could cut the clay along the edge so the bottom would sit flat. I gently push the clay down just off the bottom edge of the carpet tube and use the flat edge of the carpet tube as my guide. I use the box cutter to trim away the clay as close as I could to the tube. I wet my fingers and used them to soften up the edge that I had just cut. Now to flatten the rim. I slid the clay down the other end of the carpet tube and repeated the same process as before. Now I can slide the carpet tube out and twist the plastic wrap away. As you can see, I still need to do some cleanup on the inside with a rubber rib and my fingers. Now here's one I made previously where I cleaned up the inside. I also added a rim and a foot, so now I have a tumbler. 
There's no need for a handle, as the ridges make the cup easy to grasp and hold on to. And here's the tumbler, all glazed and fired. This was a very unique way of meeting the challenge to make a one-coil piece of pottery when you don't have an industrial wall-mounted extruder. I know there are plenty of ways we could have gone about this. I'd like to hear what direction you would have taken in the comment section below. If you liked our video, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. And if you'd like to support our channel and become part of the team, click the super thanks or the buy me a coffee button. See you next time in the studio.